good everybody it's your boy todd smith here once again alongside my tag team partner dale clifford out there in fernley nevada welcome to yet another episode of the no gimmicks podcast dale what is good my man what up todd so uh, i just want to make this blatantly obvious that uh it is not pitch black here um when we are recording this show following um <laughs> uh payback and i'm on the west coast i just want to make this completely obvious that it is still not dark <laughs> out on the west coast it is eight o'clock on the west coast the reason why Dale was making reference to that, one of the many of things wrong with that god-awful House of Horrors match was, yeah, total continuity error. It is totally bright outside on the West Coast, and it was extremely dark and was obviously a pre-tape match, but we're going to be getting to that here in a, in a few minutes. Let's first start off here with our Good, the Bad, and the Ugly recap of the WWE 2017 Payback pay-per-view. And in our main event, we had Roman Reigns, who was returning from injury, taking on the Monster Amongst Men, Braun Strowman. So the good for this one, stating the obvious, Braun Strowman wins. Dale, what you have to say about that? Absolutely. I felt um, like WWE's been building up the moment of um, Braun Strowman. And anytime, right, we've had this sayings before, when anytime you get that match with, as in the past, it was John Cena. You're like, oh, the dude's getting yeah. the momentum, and then he gets the match with John Cena and loses. And that's the same thing here. It's like Braun Strowman's building the momentum, and he's got the match with Roman Reigns. And you're like, if Roman wins this, the, this, this pay per view is a joke. Yeah. On top yeah. of what? Well, on top of House of Horrors, if Roman Reigns wins the main event, it was like this, that. <laughs> that pay per view was just going to be a disaster for me. But really, they, they um, really an injured <laughs> Roman Reigns got de- yep, an injured Roman Reigns got destroyed by Braun Strowman. And obviously, um, I'm looking forward to right now Braun Strowman versus uh, Brock Lesnar at uh, SummerSlam for the Wait. Universal Championship, Out which is so funny question. because it, because a year ago, I know that there was the thoughts that WWE was going to try to do Braun Strowman and Lesnar at WrestleMania, mm-hmm. and they pulled the plug on it, and here we are a year later, and all of a sudden everybody's kind of ready for it now. You're like, Braun Strowman has been perfectly built up, and, yes. and you're like, now Strowman Lesnar is a match that you want to see. Yeah, and it's amazing how he has been built. He has basically been built by being the hill who was beating the living hell out of the top face of the company on a weekly basis. That is what has won Braun Strowman over with the WWE Universe. I, I just, I mean, the world really truly has gone topsy-turvy, you know, because Roman Reigns is getting a living crap kicked out of him on a weekly basis, and I hear the WWE Universe chanting, you deserved it. Wow. But anyhow, getting to the bad here, although Strowman was victorious over injured Roman Reigns, it's just, it kind of, I guess, takes a little bit, you know, off of the fact that he won the match because they were playing up the, you know, the fact that Roman had returned from injury and he came back, you know, and he's all taped up and everything. Dale, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's the one thing is like, this wasn't over a fully healthy Roman. So you kind of feel like down the line, a healthy Roman Reigns is going to get himself over uh, Braun Strowman. You have the sense of, so we'll have to see um, where all this goes. I love what they're doing with Strowman. He is an absolute monster. They finally have, a true monster back on the main roster. It's been, it's like, we haven't had one since the good old days of uh, big show and Kane It's like, they're still there, but really yeah, they aren't the monster that Braun Strowman is now. It's like, this dude is just an absolute machine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll tell you who, um, who Braun reminds me of. He reminds me of big show when he was younger in his career. Um, when he was like back in his days, a WCW because big show back then, I'd say in terms of size, he's probably around the same size he is now. Probably around like maybe like the 380, 390 range, you know, and he was just so much more athletic and can move a whole lot quicker and whatnot. Yeah. That's about the only person I could really compare Braun to because you just don't see someone who is that huge and can move as as quickly as he does and as agile as he is in the ring. But now Undertaker uh, could, uh, well, Undertaker could climb the uh, dude. Do old school and then jump the top rope, but um, there's still some takers, things I think Braun does a little bit better. But but obviously takers, takers in a whole is one of class. the few exceptions, <laughs> and um and I would say Kane is another one of the yeah. few exceptions of um yeah of a big big man who could just move like. But a that's cat. the thing, 
You're talking. You're talking about the three best big men in, um, next to Andre the Giant in the history of professional wrestling. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's an elite club of those guys there. But speaking of the um, the ring, let's talk about how a portion of the ring was utilized to absolutely obliterate Roman Reigns post match. How Braun Strowman actually picked up the ring steps and crushed Roman Reigns' ribs with them, and that definitely was the ugly. Of this match here, Dale. What's your thoughts on that? Oh, for sure. It's like because that was the thing. We're sitting here where you were. Obviously, is what we do. We do a good, bad, ugly for the the um, pay per view reviews, and we're like, all right, we got the good, we got the bad. Um, what the hell's the ugly? Uh-huh. And I was like, um, Braun Strowman's uh, stair attack of Roman Reigns. It was yep. like so. Yep. Braun handed us an ugly on a T. <laughs> yep, right when we needed it. Great job, great work out of you there, um, Braun Strowman. So, yeah, at least, um, you know, this, this show, it actually ended on a pretty strong note. But overall, you know, it had its, uh, its share of solid matches, and we're going to move on to the next match from WWE Payback. We had Seth Rollins taking on Samoa Joe. So the good in this one is Seth Rollins is on a roll. You know, after returning from injury, he puts on yet another strong performance in a winning effort. Dale, what do you have to say about that? Absolutely. Uh, it is nice to have Seth Rollins back, and it is also nice to see that um, – Really, he didn't get slowed down too much from uh, the uh, knee injury at the hands of Samoa Joe. So, uh, that's definitely a good thing um, there. And now we'll, it's interesting to see where uh, Seth goes from here. I don't think he's done with Samoa Joe because I think he kind of stole a victory here. Because mm-hmm. um, he was in the submission um, lock and kind of just uh, ended up rolling up uh, Joe for a pin. So, I don't think we're done with these two yet. Yeah, I like this feud. And I hope it um, it keeps going for a little bit longer. You know, the bad in this one, I would have to say, is the fact Joe loses yet again. This guy just cannot seem to gain any momentum while he's on the main roster. You know, he came up strong from NXT, and we just haven't really seen, you know, like much in terms of him collecting, you know, wins really over quality opponents. So, Dale, what's your thoughts on that? Very true. It is unfortunate that um, Samoa Joe kind of comes up on the uh, other end of uh, the good fortune of uh, Seth Rollins because obviously this whole feud started because he injured Seth Rollins because um, mm-hmm. who knows where we would be with this well I guess it would still kind of be here anyway because um, the the Seth Rollins injury just kind of I think gave an extra element to the, um, Samoa Joe's attack when he was the henchman for Triple H so we would still be here anyway Exactly. but kind of having that knee injury mm-hmm. kind of gave an extra element to uh, this whole thing. And obviously, yeah. it's it's one of those things that I know that we debated back and forth, and I believe it came out to be true, but you kind of just look at all this, and you're like, was Seth really that injured to begin with? I'm... Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm yeah, just throwing it's, it's it out there. It's a good there. question to be asked. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, to come back and deliver a strong performance, which he did against um, Triple H, earning the title of the uh, the Kingslayer at WrestleMania 33, to you know another solid performance on pay per view. So yeah, that's that's um, definitely something to ponder there. And the ugly from this match here definitely had to have been the um, the replay, which they went out out of their way to show us in slow motion, was Joe delivering that senton right on the set's injured knee. Dell, what'd you think about that? Absolutely, that was a um, wicked bend of uh, contortion there of uh, Seth's knee on the senton. And obviously, Joe's not a, a small fry, so no, he is not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe's a big boy. I think they said he's um, they said he sits two two eighty or so. I I believe that too, and he's a solid yeah, he, two eighty. Yeah, he's up there. It's like in the, and that uh, definitely um. Was just one of the things because, I, I again, I, I'm just gonna play a little bit of the skeptical of how injured Seth Rollins' knee was because that's the thing. It's like it it helped carry the feud into WrestleMania, and that's where we are now with yeah, Samoa yeah. Joe and Seth Rollins. It's like Seth Rollins was going after uh, Samoa Joe because he injured his knee and and tried mm-hmm. to ruin his career, and then obviously in this match, Samoa Joe worked with the knee of Seth Rollins. So I'm like, yeah, if this thing wasn't um. If it was real, all right. So say it didn't happen. It's like what's the was like. Where's the storyline? Where's the psychology over the last mm-hmm. two months? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's definitely, definitely something to think of there. So 
Before we move on to this uh, next gem of a match here, let me start off by saying there was a guy who we both worked with at um, KOLO News Channel 8 out there in Reno, Nevada by the name of Frank Lido. Frank Lido portrayed um, a character named Zombo. Zombo was one of those guys who introduced like those, you know, really silly, you know, like low budget B-movie um, horror flits that they would air, you know, like on Saturday afternoons or whatever. And he wore like the makeup and the costume and everything. That was about the only thing that this crap was missing was for Frank Lido as Zombo to come up and introduce this match here. As we saw Bray Wyatt taking on Randy Orton in a House of Horrors match. Now, let me start off here with the good because there actually is some good out of this nonsense. And it's the fact that Bray Wyatt actually won the match. Um... We have some feelings as to, you know, how we feel about the win. Dale, what's your what's your thoughts on this? I don't know. As I going in, I had already set myself on the good and, and the bad, regardless of how the match mm-hmm. turned um, out. The good was going to be that Bray won. I kind of figured he was going to win because it was non-title, and that was my bad, is the fact that the title uh-huh. wasn't going to be on the line, and that's how I knew Bray was going to win. The match <sighs> this happened. This match was... <laughs> and I mean... You know, and it went, all went out the window. I was like, this is, oh my, oh, wow. How, I was like, House of Horrors, my ass. This was House of Dumb as, <laughs> dumb as AF. <laughs> if you thought that the Bray uh, Wyatt family versus the, the New Day at the compound was bad, this just takes the cake. I mean, let's start here. First of all, you know, like it was pre-taped. And as we mentioned at the top of the show, they're fighting in a house that's in the night and you're supposed to get in a limo and drive to the arena. So that's telling everyone that Bray Wyatt's House of Horrors is in San Jose, California. That's very hard to believe, okay? I'm from the Bay Area. I know what the property value is like and how nice the homes are down there, okay? That is a joke. And not only that, I mean, the whole entire concept of this thing, I mean, it's like at the end of the segment, you know, that takes place out there at the house, Randy gets a fridge toppled on top of him, and then Bray gets down his knees and starts, you know, doing his thing, and then, like, the house turns red or whatever. Um, You know, as you mentioned, it's a non-title match, which made Bray look weak in the process. Not only that, it's overbooked. So they include Jinder Mahal and the Singh brothers, who have to assist him to get this victory. Dale, do you have anything else to add to this? I mean, well, obviously, not only did you mention that he got into the limo, it was like, but as we opened the show with, it was pitch freaking black, and it was still sunnier than can be on the West Coast. And you're like, and and Michael Cole's <laughs> like, we're gonna track Bray Wyatt's progress to um to the San Jose area. I was like, that's the fastest limo in the world. If it's gonna make yes. it from where it was darker than dark to. The, the sunny side of the West Coast. And and not only that, but I guess all of a sudden, Randy Orton has inherited some of the powers from uh, Jason Voorhees from the Friday the 13th films because he was nowhere near the limo, so I just assume he um he teleported to the arena, right? <laughs> well, so it's like, yeah, you had texted me that, and, and I laughed back, and I was like, that is actually how, how I thought they were going to make uh, Bray Wyatt get back to the arena. Bray Wyatt get back, through yeah. teleportation. Instead, he got into the limo and drove off, and then Randy Orton just happens to be there. And then, obviously, we get uh, Jinder Mahal and the Singh brothers, and I'm like, oh, here we go again. And it's like, we got SmackDown mm-hmm. taking over a On Raw, Raw pay per view for the second time. Obviously, yep. we'll get further into what the um, first portion was, but I was like, wow. This is ridiculous. It's like SmackDown yeah. Live has t- has now taken a second segment of a Raw pay per view when yep. these spo- when these two shows are supposed to be competing with each other for ratings. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. And it just goes to further show. I-, I don't care what anyone says. In my opinion, I think you know SmackDown is by far the um, the more superior product, both when it comes to the weekly shows and to the pay per views. This is about maybe only one of the more decent. Um, pay-per-views, which we've seen from out of Raw brand, believe it or not, after we just absolutely butchered this match. But before we go on to the next match, we got to get the ugly in here. What the hell was up with that room, man? The creepy room with the dolls hanging from the ceiling. It was like these disturbing baby dolls, like where the dolls had like a couple arms and like, you know, multiple heads and stuff. What, what was up with that, Dill? I don't know. I was like, again, I, uh, it, they were trying to make that house look spooky. I, uh, 
I didn't, as I said, it's like I couldn't really come up with a bad or an ugly here. It, just to me, it's like this whole thing was bad. It was, um, and that's just the thing. It's like I'm now looking back at uh, the ugly is kind of, is what I feel is becoming Bray Wyatt in the WWE. It's like I've loved yeah. this guy from the beginning, but you got as you brought it up. It's like we had the Wyatt compound fight with the New Day, which was a knockoff of Final Deletion, and now we have the House yep. of Horror, House of Dumb. AF garbage that we just saw at payback. And obviously Bray Wyatt doesn't win any meaningful pay-per-views. His match with Randy Orton at WrestleMania was so gimmicky. It was terrible. Yeah. So it's like, Mm -hmm. to me, it's like the ugly is what is becoming of Bray Wyatt. I just cannot close off this portion of the show without doing my little famous impression of, uh, Mr. Zombo there. Boo. Scary. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that that about fits what they uh, their attempt at a house of horrors. Oh Lord, Dale, let's move on to the next yeah. match, shall we? <laughs> I think we spent enough on this crap. So let's let's talk about Alexa Bliss, who uh, who took on the homegirl Bailey, who's from right there in the Bay Area, um, for the Raw Women's Title. So the good here was the fact I think you were the one who um who pro- pointed this out, Dale. You said that Bailey delivers one of the prettiest looking elbows from off the top ropes. I mean, in the business, for either male or female competitors. Um, nice display out of, of offense, uh, both female competitors in this match. Though I saw some good stuff out of Alexa Bliss. Um, anything else you'd like to add to that, Dale? Well, that's just the thing. Is like that uh, the elbow drop has kind of become synonymous with uh, Randy Savage. It's the macho yes. elbow. Yes. And it's just one of those things, like the one that she delivered tonight, it was just so smooth. And mm-hmm. it just, it, 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 it landed perfect. She landed perfectly as like, it was, it was just spot on. And that's just the thing is like, I just thought it was probably one of the better spots in the uh, match. <laughs> However, it did kind of follow one of the rougher spots in, in the uh, uh, match. It wasn't bad, but it just followed one of the, uh, the more tougher spots in the match. We'll get to that in a second. Yeah, so I would have to say, you know, the bad of this one here is Bailey loses in her hometown. You know, she just can't seem to get that um that win while she's out there in the in the Bay Area. What's your what's your thoughts on that, Dale? Well, it's not only a her; it seems to be like the hometown curse for uh, anybody. Mm-hmm. Really, it's like it um it kind of seems like uh, WWE likes doing this: uh, put the face in their hometown and then have them lose, and and then you build the heel heat. For the winner, mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's exactly what went down tonight. And um, getting to the ugly here of this match, Alexa Bliss or Alexa Bliss took a stiff knee strike to the face from Bailey. Dale, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, again, I didn't think it was um, overly ugly. I just thought it was a pretty stiff shot, and and that was what ultimately set up Bailey for the um, the for macho the elbow. elbow from the uh, top. But I. I just thought it, it was it was a pretty stiff shot for a women's uh, match. It was a good shot. I just thought mm-hmm. it was one of those that goes up onto the stiffer aspect of the match, and yeah. it kind of made the ugly just because uh, when you kind of get some of the stiff um, shots in matches, like those are the ones that kind of uh, make our way into the ugly. Just in the in the terms of you get some sense of realness with them too. Yes, yes, you do. So moving on here to um, our next match from WWE Payback, we had the Hardys taking on Sheamus and Cesaro for the uh, the Raw Tag Titles. So the good from this one here, you know, definitely a quality offering from two of the best tag teams, not just on the Raw roster, but on the WWE roster as a whole. Um, Dale, what'd you think about this one? Yeah, to me, it's like this was uh, the match of the night for me. Um, okay. You have uh, four great workers. Um, a guy Cesaro who continues to kind of be underrated in in his workability. Sheamus, I think a little bit underrated too, is like because he's such a uh, just a um, hard worker. And then yes, we, and then I, I you know I think maybe the the Hardys get it a little bit just because of Jeff was was so spot driven when he first came up. But these guys do yeah. know what, um, how to work a match. It's like they're they 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 have a fifteen year career um mm-hmm. because of their ability to work a match they're not spot monkeys anymore they still do the no. occasional spots but they're not what they used to be so no their their pacing's gotten better 
Um, you know, they, they use a little bit of psychology. I say probably Matt more so than Jeff, I think, at this point. Um, but just getting back to Sheamus here for a second, man. I mean, they were just running down all the accolades. You know, for Sheamus, I mean, just about, you know, anything of work, you know, worthy of grabbing, you know, like any sort of a title or like, you know, a Royal Rumble or a King of the Ring. Sheamus has found a way to win it. So I think when you said that he is underrated, I mean, he has definitely won his share of titles and, um, you know, big big time matches, premier matches while he's been in the WWE over the years. But, yeah, he doesn't really get mentioned the same sentence um, of some of the greats, you know, the all time greats from the WWE. Uh, moving on here to the bad, the heel turn, you know, I would say that took place at the conclusion of the match. I would say, you know, I don't like it for Cesaro. It's fitting for Sheamus, you know, because I actually like Sheamus as a heel. Dale, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, as I was telling you, it was like, um, I kind of, uh, the heel turn, it, it was sharp, um, Sheamus and Cesaro um, going bad is the bad. That, mm-hmm. that was just kind of how it went to me, and I agree. It's like Sheamus to me is like needs to be a bad guy. He, yeah. he works as a heel. Cesaro, obviously, he kind of started there. Um, then he became a, um, a good guy. He's like, has been working as a good guy for so long. I think WWE mm-hmm. wants, to, wants to try to get him back as a bad guy. Um, he's still going to get cheered probably because he's Cesaro. And um, yeah. the... Um, the universe wants him to succeed as I can. So they'll root for him, but we'll see. But it, it was a good spot to pick, uh, um, the turn of Cesaro to do it against the Hardys. Yeah. Mm hmm. And about the only way that Cesaro is really going to get over effectively as a heel. And this is going to sound odd. I'm going to say this is if he does not display his freakish strength and his athleticism. If he teases some of those things that, you know, that he's capable of doing, but he actually, like, you know, pulls back at the last second and doesn't do them, you know, like the giant swing and, like, some of the yeah, um, he's gonna have high to get flying rid- stuff yep. that he could he's, do. That's he's going to have to get rid of the that, swing. Yeah, that's about the only way he's really going to turn the crowd against him because they're not, he's going to get cheered as a heel. So, yep. yeah, it should be interesting to see how this turns out. But um, getting to the ugly, <laughs> man. Boy, this this was a rough night for both Hardys, man. Jeff Hardy got an impromptu two foot stretching via boot to the two from Sheamus, and then Matt got his head busted open, and um actually showed a little color in the process. Um, what's your thoughts on this, Dale? Yeah, originally I was like, oh, uh, early on in the match when um Jeff got thrown through the uh, middle ropes and kind of ju- and didn't hit the rope or anything and kind of just like tumbled on his shoulder. I was like, oh, that was the ugly, and then. <laughs> He took that kick to the face, and and he realized that he lost the tooth. I was like, sold, yep. done. Yep, that's the ugly. Finito. We have the ugly. <laughs> yeah, we have the ugly. And then then you have the heel turn at the end, and and Matt Matt gets thrown into the um the turnbuckle post and gets busted open. And I'm like, well, we can't leave that out. So mm-hmm. it was like, we just ultimately we turned this into the ugly was an ugly night for the Hardys in the end because obviously they retained the titles. Yeah, but Jeff lost the tooth and Matt. Matt showed some crimson at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you WWE tonight because the way you guys put these matches, man, it actually kind of made it easy on us for once to put the uglies out. Because <laughs> sometimes it's kind of like pulling teeth for us to find them, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? Moving on to the next match um, from WWE Payback, we had Austin Aries taking on the king of the cruiserweights, Neville, for the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. So the good here, you know... Pretty much what we would expect to see out of these two. These guys are consistent. You know, they consistently put on one of the best matches of each pay-per-view that they're on. So this was of no surprise to us that this match delivered, right, Dale? Nope. Uh, definitely. It was another good effort. It wasn't um, up to the level that the WrestleMania match was. No, no not um, Which not is also close. a shame, too, because this match got main pay-per-view card, mm-hmm. and it wasn't as good as the kickoff show for WrestleMania, yeah. which is unfortunate, but it was still good. Still mm-hmm. another solid outing for these two guys. Um, and obviously, I think WWE knows that these two guys are the top tier of the cruiserweight division. And with the way that the match ended, I don't think we're done yet. No, and that's the bad. Because as you just mentioned, there's no need to really reiterate it. Um, the match in the DQ. You know, so that's a very anticlimactic ending for what, in my opinion, should have been match of the night. But I think that title definitely went to the Hardys versus uh, Sheamus and Cesaro. Um, anything else you'd like to add to that, Dale? 
Nope. Uh, I just know that, uh, obviously, no DQ. We're not finished with Austin Aries and Neville. They'll go one more time, at least, um, for the Cruiserweight Championship. Mm -hmm. Uh, Which is a good thing, because, obviously, this is just building up the title reign for Neville, which uh, dated back to when he finally got it. And and as we've counted down the pay-per-view since he's been the champion, is the thing that we said needed to happen was... Neville needed a, a long title reign, and now he's getting it. So, Yep. He's a breath of fresh air. He's exactly what the doctor ordered for 205 Live. They needed a strong heel presence, and they got it in the form of Neville. So glad that they um, definitely got that going for him. Now for the ugly here, um, you saw this more than I did. I don't know. Maybe I turned my head away from the screen here for a second. And you had said that Neville um, got sent to the, to the floor pretty hard there via a drop kick from Mary. So if you want to kind of – going to that a little bit further, Dale. Well, they were working this spot where um, Aries was in the middle of the ring and Neville would de- deliver a kick and then he would go up onto the ropes mm-hmm. and kind of taunt the crowd. And then he would kick Aries again and then go to another se- um, side of the ring and up onto the ropes and taunt the crowd. And okay. then he came back and he kicked kicked Aries again and then it was on the third one when he was facing the camera that he got up into the... Um, on the ropes, taunted the crowd, but Aries got up and sent him a drop kick, and he kind of just tumbled over the top rope mm-hmm. onto the apron and then to the floor. Mm-hmm. Okay. They, these two guys are so um, kind of crisp and smooth with what they kind of do. You kind of, again, when we um, talk about the uglies, sometimes it's really just a spot where it's a tumble. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes. Because it's like they're falling off the top rope all the way to the floor, and they're smacking the apron and rolling around. You mm-hmm. kind of some of those moments where you're like, man, how do they? It's like this just shows you the the great shape that they're in, that they can kind of just pop up from that thing and yeah, really not come out uh, too uh, injured. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's exactly what those guys get paid to do it for a living, and why I'm sitting at home watching them. <laughs> so moving on here to the first match of um the night from WWE Payback, we had. Chris Jericho taking on Kevin Owens for the United States title. So, the good here, you know, is that Jericho wins a solid opener and he captures the U.S. title, signifying that his current run has not come to an end. But let's kind of make take things full circle here. Why do we have a guy who's basically going to be heading to SmackDown competing on a Raw show? Why did this match even take place on a Raw pay-per-view? I guess so. We're kind of jumping to the bad here, I guess. You know, the booking yeah. of the match. Why did this match play t- take place on the Raw pay-per-view, Dale? I don't get it. It was like, I get that Chris Jericho was still on Raw, so that's the connection. But Kevin Owens was um, taken in the uh, Superstar Shake-Up to SmackDown. And he it was like, mm-hmm. and the United States title went with him. And the, and the United States title and Kevin Owens were staying on SmackDown, regardless of the finish of this match. So that means if Chris Jericho yeah. wins, he's going to SmackDown. So I'm like, so this is a SmackDown match. All yep. the way around. SmackDown title and and one SmackDown um, competitor and Kevin Owens versus Chris Jericho. It was like, but if Chris Jericho wins, he's going to SmackDown. So it's like, so why in the hell was this match on a Raw pay-per-view? Again, this is <laughs> a Raw pay-per-view payback starts off with basically a match that was helping out the SmackDown brand. Right, right. Now clarify this for me, Dell, because I am slightly confused here. Now Jericho, we know. He heads to the SmackDown brand and he's you know, got the U.S. title with him. So with Owens, what does that mean? Does he stay on SmackDown or does yes. he come back to Raw? No, he is on SmackDown. So he does, he's on SmackDown. Okay, so I just had to clarify that. Okay. I mean, his gimmick alteration doesn't really make much sense now, though, if he doesn't have the title, though. I right. Mean, but but that was the thing. Is like he, was, he was sent to SmackDown in the Superstar Shakeup. The mm-hmm. United States Championship just came with him. Okay. Okay. And then Daniel Bryan added the stipulation that if – um, Chris Jericho happened to win that the United States title and Chris Jericho would stay on, would come to SmackDown. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for, uh, for clearing that up for us. So at this point on the no gimmick skill, Dale, what do you give WWE payback 2017 on a scale of five, one to five? Oh, I, I don't know. It was, we were in the middle of the, um, Roman Reigns, Braun Strowman match. And when he started giving the, um, Superman punches, Mm-hmm. And I was like, if Roman Reigns wins this thing, this pay per view is getting a one with House of Dumb <laughs> and Roman Reigns winning. But, um, because ultimately the only really thing that killed this pay per view was um, the House of Horror. Yeah. Match. Yeah. 
I think everything else, in a way, delivered. I agree. Enough to qualify this as a solid pay-per-view. It was like, Roman Reigns got his ass handed to him by Braun Strowman. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, I gotta go three... I, I can't give it my best grade, but I'll go like a three, one, five. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's actually pretty fair. I was gonna say, yeah... I enjoyed everything up until the obvious, the uh, the House of Horrors, and that just I was afraid that it was going to have you know the same impact of like what WrestleMania 33 did, where once they hit the concert, everything after that just sucked, and the show took a nosedive. But they were actually able to rebound nicely, with giving us uh, Seth Rollins versus Samoa Joe, and then capping off the night with a strong uh, win for Braun Strowman. So I'm actually going to give it a three five on a no given scale. So. I think we could sit up here and talk about wrestling all night long. This is what Dell and I do on a weekly basis. But unfortunately, we're kind of running out of time here. So we have to go ahead and wrap things up. So thanks for tuning in for this episode of the No Gimmicks Podcast. We are no gimmicks, no image, all wrestling, all the time. Please subscribe to our official YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash the No Gimmicks Podcast. Please make sure that you subscribe publicly so that way we are aware of your support. Check out Craig Perkins' articles on ProWrestling.com. We would like to hear from our viewers, so please leave us some feedback in our comment section. Also, please like our Facebook and follow us on Twitter at the no Gimmicks PC. Remember, sharing is caring. Feel free to share the links to our episodes with other pro wrestling fans on your social media accounts as well. That does it for this episode of No Gimmicks Podcast. For my tag team partner, Dale Clifford in Fernley, Nevada, this is Todd Smith in Bristol, Connecticut, signing off. Until next time around, y'all take care.